Yet, in terms of legitimacy, what the Lisbon Treaty was trying to do was to put the European Council, the heads of government, at the top, at the apex of the system, uh, determining uh, the broad uh, lines of European policy. Now, has that worked? Um, I think it's partly worked and partly hasn't. It's not worked in the sense of the, uh, uh, that we have created a conflict between institutions. We have now so many presidents in Europe. We've got a president of the uh, European Council. We've got a, an an, a, a six-monthly president of the Council. We've got a president of the Commission, a president of the, of the Parliament. So, I mean, the question is, when Europe's won the Nobel Prize, who is going to actually walk up and receive it? And that is a, a serious point, that there are lots of institutional conflicts uh, and rivalries. Um, uh, but the plus, I think, of what's happened is that the, Euro the strengthening of the European Council has, in my view, and this is a controversial view, created the only possible framework in which the challenges of the Eurozone crisis could have been addressed. Because the challenges of the Eurozone crisis require coordinated action by member states to use their fiscal power uh, in order to address uh, the problems of the debtor countries in order to set up the European uh, stability mechanism, uh, in order to uh, recapitalize banks uh, as would be necessary under a banking union. And I just don't see how the community method as of the Commission and the European Parliament could actually have effectively uh, done that. But more politics is needed in Brussels. There's absolutely no doubt about that. At present, the trend is to try and strengthen what's called the parliamentarization, sorry, is that the right word? Parliamentarization of the system. That is to try and make the decision makers more accountable to the European Parliament. And in the next European uh, Parliament elections, each of the main political groups is going to put up a candidate who they think ought to be president of the Commission. Well, it'll be very interesting to see whether the European Council will agree to nominate the person who comes out of this process. And it will also be interesting to see uh, whether actually in member states it makes any real difference uh, to whether people think the European election is a real election or not. I'm personally uh, a bit cynical. I think the European election is an opportunity to show what you think of uh, Europe by voting for UKIP, which is what is likely to happen in Britain, uh, and uh, to demonstrate what you think of your national government, uh, which is uh, what happens uh, um, uh, quite frequently uh, elsewhere. So I think we, if we want more democracy, we've, I think in the present state of Europe's development, I think it's got to be more transparency in the way the decision-making process with the member states works in Brussels. And I've personally always favoured the idea which the Whitehall machine in Britain was always wholly opposed to, it has to be said, uh, was of having a, what I call the permanent cabinet minister in Brussels, someone who was there uh, part of the week in Brussels uh, uh, representing uh, the British government on, in the council uh, and then coming back to Parliament once a fortnight or so to answer questions uh, about uh, what they were up to and to go before parliamentary committees and be scrutinised uh, about the policies uh, that they were voting on. At present, the scrutiny process of national parliaments uh, is very weak, although it was strengthened somewhat uh, in the Lisbon Treaty. But I think in the longer term, probably what we have to go towards if we're going to really introduce democracy into Europe is to make a big leap forward in democracy. And that probably means having some kind of directly elected president. Um, now, who sh what president of what? Uh, <laughs> I think that uh, what uh, we should have in the uh, treaty that is... Uh, going to be negotiated in all likelihood after the 2014 elections, the new treaty. Uh, and this is what the German Christian Democrats say they support, so it's not without support on the continent, is to have a directly elected president 
who is combines both the role of President of the European Council and President of the Executive Body of the Commission. And I think if you did that, you might then be able to reduce uh, the Commission to a more efficient and functioning level. And my final point um, is that this arrangement, however, doesn't deal with the ins and outs problem of the Eurozone. I mean, there is going to be a, uh, an inner core Eurozone. Um, I'm personally in favor of a, what they call in the trade a variable geometry Europe. So um, my response to the Britain not being in the Eurozone is to say Britain should be fighting hard, for instance, uh, to be part of an inner core dealing with defense. And then we would be leading in a crucial area. And given the pressures on the defense budget, uh, it seems to me to be logical that we should be trying to pool uh, our resources on defense. And you could say the same about climate change and energy as an area where Britain could be taking a lead um, uh, uh, in the Eurozone. But I think that the, the question of the, uh, how the Eurozone takes these key decisions on things like uh, its banks and its fiscal policy, if there's fiscal integration, I think these are going to be very difficult. My own view is that these questions touch so much on questions which are central to national politics uh, that you will have to have some institutional development which brings together the national parliaments in the Eurozone uh, as uh, the legitimating body uh, f uh, for dealing with questions like a common uh, fiscal policy. But for the foreseeable future, um, Britain isn't going to be part of that.